John from Prisma here, and in this video we're going to learn about named constraints. So this is a new preview feature coming in version 2.29.0. So where we're going to run into this problem is if we've created our own custom names for constraints that exist in our database, we need to tell Prisma if we would like to use Prisma to migrate our database somewhere else, or if we want to create a local dev environment that emulates a remote server, we need to let Prisma know about these custom constraint names. So let's have a look at what that behavior looks like at the moment. So here we have a very empty project. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is install as a dev dependency uh, Prisma. And then that's going to allow me to run mpx Prisma in it. And you'll see that's created our Prisma schema file and also this .env file. Um, so I'm just going to replace the contents of this um, with the connection string to my remote database. So this is a database that I have hosted off in Superbase. And since I've already created the structure of my database over in Superbase, I just want to take all of that information, pull down the structure, and basically replace my schema.prisma file um, with the models that already exist. So I can do that by saying mpx prisma db pull. And you'll see that that has pulled in the structure of my database. And so we have a post and we have a user. Um, and these two models have a one-to-many relationship. So each post has a user ID. So each post belongs to a user. And so a user has an array of posts. Okay, so this looks good. Now, what if I wanted to take this structure and apply it to my own local dev environment? So if I come back to my .env file, I'm just going to comment out um, this existing connection string from my remote database, because we'll probably need to use that a couple of times. Uh, and I'm just going to paste in uh, the connection string for my local Postgres instance that I have running on my computer. And I can now use mpx prisma db push to apply that structure to my local uh, database instance. So now let's open up our database and have a look at the structure. So I'm going to connect to my local uh, database instance using psql. And then I'm just going to open up a new panel here and connect to our remote database just so we can compare the structure of these two. So if we have a look at our local database and we look at the tables, you'll see that there is a post and a user. And then if we do the same thing on our remote database, um, we'll see that there is a post and a user there as well. But the thing that we might not notice straight away is that if we have a look at um, the constraints that exist in our database, so I'm just going to paste in this big scary select statement, but really all this is doing is just saying, show me all of the constraints that exist on the table post. And you'll see here there is a primary key constraint and then a foreign key constraint. So that's what we'd expect to see. Um, so now let's have a look at our remote database. So you'll see there's still only two constraints, so that's good. We've got a primary key constraint and a foreign key constraint, but you'll see the name of this foreign key constraint, fk underscore post underscore user, does not match uh, the one running locally, so post underscore user underscore UID underscore F key. And this is because Prisma makes some assumptions about what the default uh, naming convention is for that foreign key. But in our remote database, we've actually given that our own custom name. So we've manually called it FK underscore post underscore user. So we just need to tell Prisma, instead of using this kind of conventional constraint name, um, to look for our own named constraints. So if we head back over to our project, and go to our schema.prisma file. Um, we have this post and user, but we're just going to get rid of these models because we're going to pull that data down again from, uh, from our remote database. The other thing we need to do here is we need to opt into this new preview feature. So we need to say preview features is equal to an array. And then the preview feature that we are opting into here is called named constraints. And I'm getting a red squiggly line here, and that's because I did a colon instead of equals. And then the last thing we need to do here is come back over to our .env file and say we would like to connect to our remote database instead of our local database. And now if we run that same command, so mpx prisma db pull, and then we head on over to our prisma.schema file, you'll see that we've pulled in that post and that user, so that all looks the same. Um, but the thing that's different here is that on our relation, we now have fields, references, and this extra little key called map. And you'll see that that contains our custom constraint name that we specified in our remote database. So now if we want to push the structure of this back to our local database instance, we can again just toggle uh, which connection string we are talking to and say mpx prisma db push. And then again, if we come back to our uh, connections to our database, we're just going to 
quit each of these and just reconnect. So again, this one's connecting to our local database and this one's connecting to our remote database. But now if we run that same big scary select statement on each of our instances, you'll see that we have our post primary key constraint and then FK post user. And then in our remote database, we've got our post primary key and our FK post user. So we've actually pulled that constraint information down with the rest of the structure of our database. And now our local development environment actually matches our remote database instance. Awesome, so that's how we tell Prisma about our custom named constraints. Now in the description, we'll have links to the release notes as well as the documentation for enabling named constraints. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel for more awesome videos just like this one. And follow us on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash prisma. Thanks for watching.